Okay, um, so I'm sitting here with Eric Anderson, and Eric has a, looks like an interesting device in his hand. Uh, it is May 23rd, late afternoon, um, and we are in the Danish exclusive economic zone, and we are right above um, one of the blast sites of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Um, so Eric, what, what, what are you gonna be doing here? Well, I'm going to go down along a line. Uh, there is a boy. And it would have been nice if the captain had told me exactly if that boy is on the west side or the east side of the, of the pipeline. And, but I, you know, I, I'm going to go down there. And I, I was there before, uh, so I know. I think uh, I'm going to I'm going to try to look at the depth because I have the depth profile, and the depth would tell me something about where I am. And once I know where I am, I'm going to decide whether to go east or west or north because I only really have a compass. Okay, let's go. Let's so this go. is first mate Rico Freeze. He's just thrown our drone in the water and we'll see if we can get some images of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. of Chelmsford teenager Judy Chartier frustrated investigators for nearly 40 years and on June 5th 1982 Judy went to a party in Bill Ricca and never came home. As Boston 25 News was first to report Judy and her car were recently found on the bottom of the Concord River in Bill Ricca. Boston 25 News reporter Bob Ward has been covering this case for New England's unsolved for years and new tonight at six he introduces us to two men who first started to unravel this great mystery. This high-tech side scan sonar device and this sensitive underwater drone, along with the two men who operate them, in the end are how missing Chelmsford teenager Judy Charter and her car were found in the murky Concord River in Bill Ricca last week after 39 years. Hans Hoog and Bruce Stebbins are civilians brought together by a desire to help. I look for stuff, all kinds of stuff. Hans Hoog is a life insurance salesman but he also owns Sonar Search and Recovery in Exeter, New Hampshire. On August 21st, his EdgeTech side scan sonar located four cars in the Concord River. This is not one of those cars, but this is what a sonar side scan image of a submerged vehicle can look like. I knew I had a car. I didn't know it was the car. It was enthusiast Bruce Stebbins, after doing some research on Judy's case, who first decided to look in the Concord River. A month after Hans found something with his sonar, Bruce dropped his underwater drone in the river. Everything that we saw with the footage matched up with her car. There wasn't a lot of identifying marks, but what we could find really matched up with it. After talking to Chelmsford police, Hans got into his scuba gear for a closer look. I saw the three spoke steering wheel and the window vents, the little triangular vents from the 70s. Everything about it said yes. Dodge Dart. All of it was enough to get the state police dive team on scene, along with Chelmsford and Bill Ricca police. Soon, Judy's car was positively identified, and with days, Judy herself. Answers to a long-standing mystery found by two men trying to make a difference. From the start, it, it broke my heart that, you know, she's been missing all this time. We accomplished the goal of finding Judy, at least finding the car. Judy Chartier is not the only missing persons case in New England. Hans and Bruce are hoping that their expertise, their technology, might be able to help other families too. 
In Chelmsford, Bob Ward, Boston 25 News. tell the tale and now he can see the moment it happened. NBC2 anchor Brenna White made this happen. She tr actually tracked down an <laughs> underwater drone team to go hunting for the camera that was lost in the attack. 911, what's the location of your emergency? A guy got bit by alligator. Please hurry up. You never understand the power of wild animal like that until you're in its mouth. Jeffrey Heim had been in the Mayaka River for just over a minute. He was bitten by an alligator. Yes, he's, he's right now. He's being real good. How old is he? When the amateur fossil hunter became the hunted. Come up for a breath, and I felt like I got hit by a boat. A six and a half foot gator chomped down on his skull. I thought it was. He's got near a lot of so I, like propeller to the head and it pulled me down. Attached to the mask on his head, a GoPro recording the whole thing. What it will show is it's not going to see the gator hit me. It's going to see it come off uh, because it hit me from behind. I never saw it coming. With the footage sitting at the bottom of the river, the truth about what happened was trapped only inside Jeffrey's head, held together by 35 staples. Some people are accusing me of provoking the attack. Hoping to prove his innocence, Jeffrey asked other divers to help him find the GoPro. That mission failed, but we had a different idea, and Jeffrey was eager to let us give it a go. Yes, sir. Veteran-owned tech company Flymotion agreed to meet us on the river. One of the teams that we work with the most, in, and especially in local public safety, is bomb squads. You know, we're helping put something else in harm's way in front of them. With their underwater drone, typically used for public safety, government, and defense. Most of the time, we're giving this equipment to first responders, the guys who are on the front lines that are, uh, you know, searching for people, um, you know, lost swimmers. <laughs> So it looks like we've got maybe a foot or two feet of visibility. Looks like you're in a good spot there, Chase. Maybe even more, a little bit in towards shore if you can. We're getting yeah, to the right fish. place here. Less than an hour into our search, Flymotion found a snorkel. I cannot believe that. And as their drone breached the surface... It's got a GoPro on it. Oh my God! Yes, sir. Hey, great job, brother. That's super freaking cool. That's crazy. I FaceTime Jeffrey to share the good news. Found your GoPro. No way. This is the guy that found it. Hey, buddy. <laughs> wow, you are really good at your job. Because I had died. <laughs> good job, guys. Thank you so much. I really, really hope I was filming. He was. NBC2 can confirm the video shows the GoPro falling into the water as the gator attacks Jeffrey from behind. Seems like the uh, gentleman who lost it wants to see it real bad, and, and if he does, I'm excited for him. Unfortunately, by the time this story aired, Jeffrey decided not to let us show you the footage we found, citing emotional distress. You're lucky. Crazy story, huh? Well, you're lucky as hell. Okay. Because we can't show the video, I guess, but you right. saw it. I did. So we got the GoPro that day. We came back and looked at it and, you know, had our plans mm -hmm. to get it back to Jeffrey. So the GoPro's perspective is from the top of his head. So all you see about a minute into this video of him diving for fossils is the water. The GoPro splashes into the water and it floats to the bottom. So you never see the gator. You never see the jaws. You don't even <laughs> see Jeffrey, you know, his arms or anything. 
just splashes right his, in. The top of his head is yes. still all of the evidence. <laughs> yes. So made. sorry to not be able to show you, but I know it's frustrating just to hear what it is. Yeah. But you know, still an amazing story. Yeah. You can imagine. What it looks I can't like. believe you found it. I know. Wow. I know. We either. were so excited. Yes. So happy we could get it back to him. Pretty cool. Thanks, Brenda. Тем как погрузить дрон в воду, дно озера обследовали эхолотом. На выявление имуверных ВНП великого размера кидается маячок. Ну и от этого маячка обстежуємо территорию там приблизно 20 на 20 метров. Нашли 5 градів. Вони находяться на, на дні озера за допомогою водолазів і спеціальної техніки. Вони будуть підняті сьогодні. За поднятие снарядов со дна отвечает... Под водой дрон работает час. Дальше садится аккумулятор. Через годинку продолжим. Видите, как дрон дарует вам час на каву, да? В принципе, так. Да. Было бы неплохо. Тут працюем уже третий день. То есть мы уже пришли в эту сторону от поста. И так мы потихоньку собираем, собираем, собираем. Даем выбухи небезопасные предметы. Вибуховую речовину. 